Right, how do we pull information out of the database that we stored there at a previous time? I'm gonna start by creating a space on the page where we can actually display some notice that we've saved already in the database. So what I'll do, I'll just move this up a little bit to give ourselves a little bit more room and I'll grab a text element and put it here below. So this text element you can think of as like a placeholder value that's gonna display our notices description. So what we'll do is we'll look in the database and we'll grab like the first notice that we find and we'll populate the description of that notice here in that text input. Remember, you know, back to that Twitter example, there are a lot of like structural visual elements on the page and depending on what profile that you're viewing, right, the actual value of those those elements will change, right? It's not gonna be the same logo for each profile, but each profile page, right, is just a template with a placeholder image element that can kind of shine through whatever value it's being given. So in our case, we've got a text element here that's standing in on the page. What we actually wanna do is, if we highlight this, this text in here, we can insert dynamic data. So what we've been doing up until this point, you know, when we're typing hello world, is we're just adding in static data, right? Every single time we load the page, it's gonna say hello world. If we insert dynamic data, we actually are letting this text element point to the database and, you know, display some value, some information that it's getting from the database. So our job when we're defining dynamic data here within an element is we're actually telling that element where to look in the database. And you know, wherever, whatever it finds in that place where it looks, that's what we want it to display, you know, through this element. This, this, this element is a conduit for the values that live in the database. So we have to define some kind of expression here. And the most common one that you're gonna use is do a search for, okay? So do a search for is gonna be doing a search within the database. So we first have to say, well, what type of data are we looking for here? In our case, we're looking for a notice, okay? And here we can actually give some constraints so that the search you know, is only gonna look for particular notices and there's really, you know, an infinite amount of different rules that you can create here in terms of the search constraints. You could, you know, only search for notices that were created within a certain range, a date range. You can only search for notices that have, you know, certain keywords in the description. Um, to keep it simple, we're not gonna have any constraints here at all, okay? Um, but you'll notice like we can't just have a search for notices, okay? What that's doing is pulling out like a whole list of notices. It's giving us all of the notices that we have in the database all at once. But this text input can't handle all of the notices in the database, right? We actually have to tell it to take something specific. It can take, you know, maybe it can take the description field of those notices right, and populate them one after the other, or it can just take a single notice and populate the field with that notices description. So that's what we're going to do here. We're gonna take the first item in that list, so we're getting this whole list of stuff, we're skimming off the first item of that list, and then we actually have to display something within this text element, right? So we're gonna display that description. And if I now, and refresh the page, you can see we're actually seeing something here. Hello world, this is a notice. So that's working, you know, brilliantly. What we could also do, you know, maybe we don't want to take the first item, we could take the last item in the list, all right, which looking in our database, the last item that was created actually doesn't have a description. So we'll just say, you know, last item in list so that we have something to look at. Refresh this page, right? And now we're seeing the last item in that list. Okay, so that's a really basic demonstration of how to pull an item out of the database and display it out to the user. But, you know, we've only grabbed one notice here. We actually have a whole list of notices. So what would it take to actually display that whole list on the page? 
That's what we're going to cover in the next video.